Like, what do you do against this? Like, watch this, guys. It's over, boys. Is there a scary card I'm not thinking about? Oh! That almost got me, man. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Holy sh! Yeah. He almost got me with that. <laughs> that was almost super pog. Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Okonoshi once again with another Legends of Rune Terror deck guide. Um, as for showing off this deck today, I can't take full credit for it. It goes out to Till Red for creating this harrowing uh, Demacia, spooky Demacia, however you'd like to call it. It is a pretty spicy deck, and we're literally just taking taking the uh, shell of mid-range Bannerman Demacia, taking our Bannerman and putting harrowing and ruination in this guy. This like this. This guy's a genius, man. Till Red comes out with some pretty good decks, hence why I would like to share this one today with you guys, because I think it'd be good for climbing. And it definitely is going to uh, <laughs> tilt your opponents. So basically, we play a similar mid-range strategy. You know, we've got the bunch of like the one, the twos, and the three drops, curving out as we need to, slapping it in the face, and if things turn to poop, which they might, you can just play Harrowing and kill your opponent. It's actually ridiculous, this uh, meta that we're in now. It seems like we're going into the spooky meta, lol. As um, I probably should turn my notifications off, but uh, I'm not even live right now, but that's great. Thank you so much for a follow. <laughs> so anyway, let's go through the list here. I'll give you a quick summary summary of what the deck wants to do. For anybody who is not familiar with uh, mid-range Bannerman, then this might be a new concept to you, but if not, you'll probably know what's up. Firstly, the champions we're going to be featuring is going to be Garen, actually, and Fiora. Now, Garen isn't traditionally the best for a straight-up mid-range deck, because it's not exactly the best finisher, and it can be kind of slow sometimes. There's some other 5-drops that are just better well-rounded for ending games. But in a deck like this, where we run Ruination and Harrowing, and we're just clearing boards and replaying our big dudes, um, Garen actually makes a pretty good fit, and unironically, Judgment can be pretty insane as well. Now, besides that, we've got three Ruination, three Harrowing, three Remembrance because, you know, things are going to die. This is actually pretty crazy to combo after Harrowing as well. So if, even if they clear your board or your units all die, you get to play Remembrance for free. And that is wild. Three Scythrias because we're kind of greedy in this list to make the Harrowing a lot better. Just one Swiftling Lancer. Swiftling Lancer provides for traditional Bannerman decks some value in hand because card draw is quite limited. So in a deck that doesn't run cards like Harrowing, Swiftling Lancer gets bumped up. Just one Radiant Guardian 2 for similar kinds of reasons. This card's generally a lot better when we have limited card access, you know, limited re uh, value, limited resources. And right now, aggro isn't too crazy. Three Banner, uh, three Garen, uh, three Grizzled Rangers, which makes a lot of sense alongside Harrowing and alongside Radiant Guardian as a minimalistic amount, but also Remembrance too. Because even if you bring back Grizzled Ranger from the Harrowing, it's going to die, but it's going to leave behind the Badger Bear, which is incredible. Just one Rally. You'd figure that Harrowing is quite of, kind of enough to finish the games, but every now and then you might still curve out and hit that one-off Relentless Pursuit and end your opponent before it even become, becomes relevant. Three copies of Fiora, still generally a good uh, access card for, um, uh, still generally a good unit for a mid-range deck. And because we're running Garen 2, she gets even better for the chance that we have Judgment. Uh, th uh, three War Chefs, pretty staple. Three Single Combats, pretty staple. Bright Steel Protector, Fleetwood Tracker. And Cythria for the early game. As well as Rangers Resolve as a one-off because every now and then it might become... Uh, it's kind of similar in the Relentless Pursuit aspect where every now and then it's going to do something amazing, but too much of this card might clunk your hands, etc. Shall we jump across and talk about the Mulligan? So for the Mulligan, I don't think it gets any simpler than this one. Basically, you're just looking for a curve. The best way you can like find that curve anyway means necessary. So ideally, you get a one drop, you get a two drop, and you get a three drop, and you're good to go. The only exception I'm going to argue is that with this list, because we run Harrowing, um, it is quite a heavy card, but it is also a considerable keep in some matchups. Now, going up against aggro and other mid-range decks, arguably, you would probably kick it. But, but, if you've already got a curve, let's say you have a 1, 2 into 3 drop, I would argue that considering keeping the Harrowing might be worthwhile because you have a couple of draws to get to your mid-range units that you need to play on curve. 
and you're guaranteeing that towards the when you need harrowing you have harrowing and sometimes you can even play this with some uh, spell mana banked up it makes spell mana a whole lot better in this list i don't think you'll ever keep a ruination nor will you probably keep uh, kind of like around about the garen upwards it might be an argument for keeping remembrance um if you think you're going to float mana against slower matchups but even still against most matchups all around look for the curve if that means kicking harrowing to find it then that's what you'll do if you already have a curve consider keeping it most especially against mid-range and other control decks because this is going to be how you just run them down especially in the mirror matchup if this deck starts to become popular which i think it may i saw swim mucking around with this as well this deck may start to become popular which makes considering keeping harrowing and rural nation actually a thing outside of that can't go wrong you might even have a hand that's like one, uh, two, three into four drop as well. You can keep the Crystal Ranger. It's definitely a valuable card. Very, very strong. Now, outside of not getting the perfect hand, I guess I should explain what to consider though, because I've done plenty of these mulligans as well, but I haven't really shown you like the um like the the situations where you might just consider keeping, even though it's not a curve, you might could consider it anyway. Let's say you're not going first. You know, you're on attacking evens. You have a two drop and you have a four drop. You might consider just keeping Bright Steel Protector and War Chefs and Grizzled Ranger in the hand, if that makes sense, and kicking the other expensive cards in hopes to find the cheaper ones. Outside of that, um, if you get given multiple three drops and you're on attacking odds, for example, you might consider keeping a Fiora. You might, well, we only have a couple of three drops, but you know what I mean? Like if you get given a Fiora and you're on attacking odds, kick everything else, probably look for the cheaper units if you're fortunate enough, but at least you'll have something to play on turn three. Ideally, we want the one drop, so, this deck strives on playing a one drop so arguably as well i guess if you have quite an expensive hand unless you're on attacking odds you should probably kick the fiora finding the one drops is pretty mental in this deck but you don't always hit that so you have to figure out how to kind of balance the right matchups and that's going to come down to the matchups too guys like i wouldn't say you keep the fiora all the time but if you're versing let's say for example an aggressive deck like a super aggressive hyper aggressive deck you might even kick the fiora in hopes to find the one drops because the one drops will help you a lot but if you are versing a slower mid-range or control deck then maybe keeping the fiora is just fine that should wrap up the mulligan that was a little bit more in detail than i expected but i hope all the information comes across to you guys and it makes a lot of sense now we should finally go play some games so you can see this deck running and you can try and visualize the play style and then take the games to yourself to ladder and climb to masters yeah, have a great day, guys. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to leave a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I do post regular Runeterra content. Have a fantastic day, guys. Oh, no. It's my arch nemesis. The better Australian Runeterra player. Wait. Okay, is this playing? Sure. I think Leather Track is probably super weak. If I'm going to keep multiple one drops, it might be worth to keep Swift Wing Lancer. This should be a good matchup for us. At least every time I've been playing the Twisted Fate Ezreal, we get stomped by mid range decks. Knowing my luck, though, probably not so much. I think it's better to place a three here. It's better into, like, you know, Thermo Beam, which is not common, uncommon for them to keep in the opening hand. Make it rain. Yeah. So playing something there was probably a mistake. I just made his make it rain better, but I have to play some cards. You don't actually run parlay, do you? Oh, you run some beam, right? Jesus Christ, man.
I'm just gonna pause here. They don't usually have the best answers to clearing the Fiora here. Yeah, this range just resolves pretty good. There's no answer here. He's running out of cards in hand too. That's really nice for us. So I'm going to give a uh, barrier onto the Fiora. And I pretty much lose my bright still, but sure thing. Okay. That's really good for him. I should play one of these Harrow Rings now for sure. I should do it now for sure. I like another one plus Ruination in hand. Makes his Make It Rain not as good. He's gonna shoot something at my face, right? Okay. How do I navigate this? Oh, it doesn't even have, um... This feels reasonable, I think. I'll give the buff to Fiora. So at least I can clear the Ezreal. He's alive on one. Holy oh, shit. And he's gonna clear my unit and push a lot of face damage. Oh, are you yeah. fucking kidding me? If he has Riptide Rex in hand, I think I just lose. Cause I like, yeah. Okay. Well, hang on. If he drops for Riptide Rex, I'm just gonna ruinate him. All right, champ. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, dude, didn't see that coming. Yeah, sure. Your little grifter. That's fine. I got harrowing again. He's got Rex activated, but. I don't know if it can beat Harrowing. It would legit need to land like, I don't even know. Something like that, I guess. Would this deck make more sense with Lucian? There is some variance with Lucian, yes. This is a bit of a recent concept. This is Till Red's version from like 11 days ago. GG. Get him out of here, dude. Till Red is the next level. If he says so, it must be better. It was 11 days ago though. It was 11 days ago.
I mean, I couldn't ask for a better hand. Probably just kick the remembrance. I play normal and I win my deck a lot. Moving forward, you think you'd just be doing normal? At least you haven't got as much pressure. So he wants to play Remembrance. I'm just going to open attack. If I develop the War Chefs, he probably uses the Swift Wing Lands to go into it. What is this pass, man? Uh, what's the play here? For justice! For, justice. For Damasia! <laughs> Why is there an Expedition token on the Battle Pass? I don't know, that's super fucking trolly. Is he trying to set up for a, uh... What is he doing here? Have a wonderful stream, my guy. Fake Hero 3 and everyone have a great night. I am Nutter has dropped four bids. Thanks, Brody. Thank you so much. You take care of yourself now. I'll tell you what, we need to find Harrowing on the ASAP. He thinks I'm getting outplayed, but he's getting outplayed. So I've been, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Chilkai? Chilkai? What is Chilkai? Toss and chill. <laughs> Toss and chill. That's cool. Okay, I have no ruination mana anymore. I don't think this guy is a noob. He knows what I'm up to. Sad. I need harrowing. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Develop something. Oh man, he's 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 playing around my ruination super hard. That's good. I'm gonna rally here. He's probably gonna play Lux now. No? He's played... He's already played so many concerted strikes. So he... Yeah, we'll just attack with everything.
That's a good find. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. He's running Rekindle, of course. Ah, oh, that's rough. That's super rough, man. But now you develop. What the fuck? You were playing so good up until you developed the Lux. You were playing so good up until you did that, buddy. Oh, shit. I'm disappointed because Commodium, Commodium player. Very disappointed. Yay, Harry's here? He could play a pretty cheap Remembrance or two. If he has double Remembrance, that's going to be a pretty Pepega. Okay, one's fine. All right. This should just be a win, right? Yeah, this is hell or a win. Harry equals harrowing. Ah, oh, Harry. Harry. He overcommitted on a turn where he didn't need to. He would have won that game if he just open attacked for sure. And then he would have had a Lux on the field. I would have had to have played Ruination. He would have then played... Ruination though? Doesn't matter. If he just open attacks... If he just open attacks and rips out a Lux... His board is so threatening that I'm forced into Ruination. At that point, he can just play a Lux for free and then it's... I don't know if he like wins the game necessarily, but I'll probably lose the game from the open attack. With the amount of damage that he's pushing, right? I have one unit on board. I have 10 H... I have 15 HP. 